some folk of Alexander and some of Hercules, of Hector and Lysander and such great names as these. Hello and welcome to this Battle Mech Overview. Today we're going to be looking at Aus Steiners and Defiance Industries, Zeus. Just as last week we were discussing the dragon, uh, pretty much an iconic mech for Aus uh, Curita. The Zeus kind of holds the same place in history, in a way, for Aus Steiner. A lot of people make jokes about Steiner uh, having way too heavy mechs. To do all sorts of uh, work but it kind of goes hand in hand when you're one of the rare group of uh, industrialists that were still able to produce massive amounts of mechs in the uh, larger price range let's say during the succession war and the zeus was probably one of the main reasons for that the lyran commonwealth is well known for just how massive their industrial base is and there's good reasons for that mainly defiance industries and uh, defense and all the different subdivision of that company but when we look at uh, battle mech production there's two mechs that really come to mind when we think of the lyrans at least during the succession war era with the commando and the zeus the 25-ton Commando has been a uh, staple of battle mech warfare from really its onset. It's one of the first battle mech period, basically. And it's a workhorse in that uh, light mech category. Good enough that uh, Aus Steiner's been producing it since forever, and I don't think they ever will stop. And it's a mech that's actually fairly well complemented by the Zeus, which is their uh, workhorse light assault built mainly for long-range support and hit and run. It was uh, built by Def uh, Defiance since the late 2780s, while the Commando has been, like I said, one of the first battle mech ever built. So this one here was basically a post-Star League era battle mech, and one of the first one in that uh, Succession War era of new mechs that didn't really uh, affect anything from the SLDF. It has a pretty decent top speed of about 65 kilometers per hour. Decent armor. I'm not going to say it's well armored because at its weight range, you could have loaded more armor on it, but that would have come to the cost of weaponry or equipment. It's fairly easy to maintain. I actually love seeing a Zeus come into the factory because we know how they work and we know how to fix them. And it's a favorite amongst many Lyran commanders and mercenary leaders. Outside of that, though, you will not be seeing Zeus's in a whole lot of situation. Even when the Federated Sons and the Lion Commonwealth had united in the mid-31st century, the AFFS loyalists, basically, the people that were really uh, more on the Davion side of the border, didn't really care for the Zeus all that much. A few of them were forced to use it, basically in a uh, attempt to try to merge the two uh, kingdoms together a little bit more. But it never reached the point where uh, the Federated Sons had a significant amount of Zeus. And during the uh, Fedcom Civil War, things went back to how they were, with the Zeus really being fielded on one side of the equation and not on the other. You will see some having been uh, salvaged by Aus Kirida, some of them being salvaged by Aus Merrick. But it's not going to be a common occurrence. And it's not even because Defiance doesn't want to sell it to anybody else. People really just are not interested in the Zeus as it really is directly connected with Aus Steiner. A lot of time when we do these uh, reviews, we generally start by talking about the Succession War version of the mech. But here, let's face it, Defiance has been producing this one for so long and so many refit kits are actually available all over the place that this version the zeu 9s is probably the one that you will find and see running around it's really what most people associate with the zeus nowadays it uses just as much star league technology in it to keep it going and not cripple it in case something really bad happens. At the art of the Zeus and most model of Zeus is a 320 pit band power plant, which is a pretty reliable piece of gear. And not the biggest out there, not the smallest out there. It's very reasonable 
which is cooled by a set of double heat sinks, in this case, 17 of them, which might sound like a lot, but once we are going to look at the uh, weaponry here, it's going to make a little bit more sense. It's protected by 11 tons of ferrofibrous alloy in this particular configuration, which is not the maximum. It's uh, not the minimum either. It is in that category where it fits for an heavy mech, but for an assault mech, I might find it a little bit tin. But the ammo for it, it's uh, one weapon that still has ammo, is protected by case as well, so you're not going to blow up just as bad. One of the good thing here, it doesn't use an XL or a light engine in the standard configuration here, so losing a side torso is not going to cripple you completely. And like I said, the Zeus is fairly easy to repair and refit, so losing big chunks of it is usually, well, it's bad, but not catastrophic. You can usually recover from it with a decent set of engineers. The Zeus 9S is primarily built as a long-range support machine. While it has weapon that for pretty much every range bracket, it's mainly meant to stay fairly far from the opponents and shoot at them with a combination of uh, direct fire energy weapons and missiles. The left arm is equipped with a Defiance 1001 ERPPC, which gives you a very good range, but also doesn't have a minimum range as compared to regular PPCs. So you can use it in close combat more effectively than a standard PPC would. The trade-off, obviously, is how much heat it generates, which, when combined with the Cyclops 12ER large laser in the left torso, means you're going to run pretty hot unless you uh, keep yourself uh, in check a little bit. The missile weapon on this is a 15 rack of LRMs built around a barrel fist on the right arm, which you can use to punch people if you run out of ammo in the worst case scenario. And it does work fairly well at that, to be honest. For close range support, you do have a pair of medium pulse lasers generally built forward backwards. Some engineers will have them flipped over both front. It's not an uncommon modification. I've seen a lot of people do that, and it's fairly efficient in either configuration. As far as Succession War models go, there's two of them that are your standard production models, with the Zeus 6S being your original production model the big problem was originally they did want to have a ppc in that arm but it never worked like it should it actually messed up the fusion engine shielding when it was fired so they reworked the whole thing around a defiance type jac5 you get a lot less punch but let's face it in ac5 generates one tenth to one fifteenth of the eat of a ppc which means you are uh, fairly safe from overeating. Uh, the lasers are also standard models on it, so it's a large laser and two medium lasers, generally front and back, as usual, and the LRM-15 is still an LRM-15. Is it a terrible model? Not really. Is it uh, going to change the battlefield? Not really, but you're going to be able to produce quite a few of them. They're going to be fairly cheap. There's no fancy bits in it anymore, and it's all parts that are fairly straightforward to replace uh, except for the large laser which actually had some issues for a little while they were uh, thinking that maybe they weren't going to be able to keep reproducing it but for a large laser in the end you could have probably switched it to another model of large laser and re-engineer at least the uh, weapon linkage and it would have worked just fine i mean large lasers are a common technology for a long time now the 6T version is late Succession War era, probably uh, started, you had a few of them running around the right before the Fort Succession War and where uh, during the Fort Succession War you saw quite a few of them, where you actually switch out that Defiance Type JAC5 for a party kill PPC and two additional heat sinks. It's a better machine in my opinion and now that the uh, shielding issues were uh, resolved, it's back to what we wanted the Zeus to be in the first place, I guess. Gives you double the punch for a significant amount of extra eat, but two extra eat sinks kind of compensate for that, and a regular PPC will generate a decent amount of eat, but not as much as an ER version. You'll probably still see some of those run around and in various form of repairs and refit, and I think they're both reasonable models.
Of course, there are derivatives of the Zeus that came later, including some very expensive ones. The 9S2 is a true dedicated sniper. It's really not meant to uh, get into close range with anything because you swap out the ERPPC for a Gauss rifle. You keep the ER large laser, which is about your only weapon that's going to be efficient within, uh, let's say, 120 meters. And you have two LRM-15 instead of one in the other arm. You don't have those close range medium lasers to get you out of trouble. So hopefully you have some bodyguards to help you. But as a sniper mech, it works really well. The follow up to the 9S was the 9T, which actually uses even more advanced technologies. The main big change is that you use a light 320 rather than the standard 320, which saves you a little bit of weight, but you're going to be a little bit more easy to cripple since it takes up a little bit more room in the mech's torso. Thankfully, this is compensated by adding a decent chunk of armor for a total of 13 and a half tons. The LRM is linked to an Artemis 4 guidance system and a little bit more ammo. And the medium lasers are switched up with uh, ER mediums to allow for a little bit more range and close range support. Is it a terrible mech? Obviously not. It's more of the same in the line of the Zeus. Just a little bit more fragile. Just have to be a little bit more careful and you'll do just fine. The Word of Blake has seized Esperus II during the Jihad and used their factories to build their own version of the Zeus, the 10WB. Again, it's another machine that's almost extinct nowadays because of that. Nobody really wants to be running around in Blakist machine and it uses even more fancy technology in order to uh, make it run. You use an XL gyro and a light 320. Again, uh, very expensive bits that makes you a little bit more fragile. But 14 tons of ferrofibrous armor is a very good chunk of it. The big problem comes with how much uh, temperature you're going to generate with that mech. As it's equipped with a pair of heavy PPCs, uh, the standard ER large laser, four ER medium lasers. So if you start shooting everything, you are going to be boiling yourself alive. But if you start concentrating on one or two different weapon systems, you're going to be okay. Of course, those heavy PPCs, you won't be able to use them in really close range. So you're going to be swapping the shooting of those very heavy guns for the ER medium lasers at a closer range. So you might be able to compensate and uh, not kill yourself uh, due to heat exhaustion. Defiance wanted to stay in the game during the post Jihad era and started building the Zeus X around... <laughs> The numbers vary here. It was really started as a prototype and as an experimental base. The actual production model, the Zeus X4, probably around 3119 or so. In order to be protected, what it has is a very, very big Defiance 400 XXL engine, which is just massive in terms of size, but extremely light in terms of weight. It does give the Zeus a speed of around 85 kilometers per hour, so that's actually decently fast for an assault mask. It's in the same category as your uh, gargoyles or your charger. But of course, since it uses a uh, different technology, you can still stick guns on it at least. Everything that's explosive is more or less protected by case two. And the body itself is actually using reactive armor rather than anything else, which is decent at blocking some forms of damage, but not as good as uh, others. I would probably have gone with laser reflective if possible, but those are just sometimes hard to get. Another way to save space on the mech was to use a composite material, the skeleton, which is ex actually extensively fragile. This makes the Zeus X, in my opinion, the most fragile of all the Zeus, even though the reactive armor is meant to there as a protection and the extra speed will make it that some blows and some shots start going over you. For weaponry, you've got a light Gauss rifle or a 20 rack of LRM and a typical ER large laser for long, long and middle range support and a medium X pulse laser, which is a decent weapon and it helps with a short range support. 
Every Zeus X is also equipped with an advanced command console, making the mech a command mech from the get-go. As I keep saying here, it is very fragile compared to a regular Zeus, and it's not something that I would actually promote personally, especially not in an assault mech. Some people might actually enjoy that kind of setup, but in my opinion, something that can last an awful long time is a lot better than a machine that looks really, really fancy, but breaks down every time someone shoots at it. The most recent version of the Zeus is actually the 11S series, which I believe is actually the primary machine the Zeus X wants to be, but in a better package. The main big point on this is that the engine for the 11S series is a Clan XL Bitband 320, which is the same size as your light engine, but actually a little bit lighter, which gives you that uh, extra bit of uh, control here to make the Zeus 11S survivable in the long run. All explosive bits are protected by case two once again, and the sensors are actually linked to a Beagle active probe. Not sure why they didn't use a clan tech active probe, but it's probably more a fact that Defiance doesn't have access to them easily while they are able to build those clan engines. As far as weaponry goes, it has a general inner sphere Gauss rifle, while the other weapons are actually built to clan standard with an Artemis 4 controlled 15 rack LRM and ER large lasers, and two ER medium lasers, as usual mounted front and back, but can be both mounted in front. We know the drill. Honestly, as a frontline machine, and a support machine, because that's what it's meant to be, it's pretty glorious. Honestly, it's something that would work about as well in a clan Toman, or an inner sphere military. Zeus being the assault mech you would be able to get easily throughout the Lyran Commonwealth and Lyran Alliance meant that there were multiple versions that were actually modified to be command mechs. A lot of versions just used a dual cockpit. At first, the 6S, the 6T, uh, removed the rear firing medium lasers to stick a second cockpit module in the head. The 9S version took out a uh, double heat sink instead to be able to do that. And that makes it a basic command mech with both the uh, cockpits being able to pilot the mech if necessary, and one of them being able to command the entire, well, battalion in the worst case scenario from the second cockpit. There is a full command console version of the 9S, the 9S DC, which takes out the rear firing med pulse laser and the heat sink to have the full command console fit in to the cockpit instead. You'll probably see other versions of those refits floating around probably going to have one for the 11 s series as well it just depends on uh, who you talk to zeus is a bit of a hot duck in my book it's not something that i would actually hunt for or try to get as a priority target uh, for my uh, lances or even a, a company but it's something that's fairly easy to get and it's something that was easy to get throughout the entire succession war just with how many of them were built by Defiance and field by just about everyone, just because of how it works. While the Lyrans are really the ones that have used the most of those mechs, as we keep saying, regular expansion and salvage led to just about everyone and their brothers having a few floating around, and you will be able to find one for sale at a decent price normally. And for spare parts, Defiance is always ready to give you a the parts you need as long as you've got the seabills for it. So I hope you guys have a very nice rest of your day. I thank you for listening to me for so long, and I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.